Welcome. Today we're going to talk about ditching DevonThink because now I have a framework laptop in my life running Fedora 37 and that does not work on Linux, on anything but macOS systems. Before we do that, I want you to know that today's video is sponsored by Reflect App. We'll talk more about that later. Let's buckle up. Let's talk about ditching DevonThink and some of the options. So like I said, I have a framework laptop in my life now. It is Great. I, mean, I really, really, really have been liking it. It's nice to have a laptop again. It's nice that it's modular. It's nice that, you know, they just came up with new upgrades about two weeks after I bought it and I could buy any of the upgrades and put them in my laptop. I love it. I can get a matte screen. I can upgrade to the AMD chips. I can upgrade the RAM. I can take the old main board and turn it into a standalone computer somewhere else. I love all of that. But now I realized I have some software lock in specifically in DevonThink and my note taking system. DevonThink only runs on Mac OS. It only runs on iPad, iOS. That's it nowhere else. So I'm kind of stuck in what I use kind of as my read later, read later service and as my tool for other people's thoughts, because I like to have two systems. One is DevonThink currently for other people's thoughts, and one is Obsidian for my thoughts, for my notes, for the things I really want to capture about these other tools. So let's talk about what I currently use DevonThink for and just some of my options, some of the things I don't use in DevonThink that I've talked about before and said, oh, this is a great feature, don't actually use it ever. Uh, and then some of the options for this. So a few sort of different things. One of the first ones is keeping other people's thoughts. So you can see I have the end of thought from the end of organizing, um, end of organizing and just talking about thoughts. So articles I want to read later, things that I want for myself, things that I want to keep track of. I keep these around in DevonThink. I don't use Instapaper or some other read later service. I keep them all in DevonThink because if I'm going to keep track of them, if I'm going to take notes on them, but I want to have a link to them for later that is permanent, that's not you know like a web link that can just die because they die regularly. I want to be able to dig into it and find it later. The second thing I use DevonThink for is under my personal vault, and there'll be manuals in here, right? Manuals. So what is this? for a bridge keyboard, which I don't use anymore, right? Or for uh, our washing machine, or oh, for an air conditioner, also don't have that anymore. For lots of other things, for Lego instructions, right? Keyboards, I should have Lego instructions in here. So I actually probably have my own Lego instruction one as well, Lego instructions right there. So I have Lego instructions for all the Lego things we have. So that we have the Lego instruction, but it's long-term. That's the other thing I use Devin thing for to keep track of, say long-term PDF stuff, manuals on the car charger, because I have a, you know, a booster slash charger for the car. Manuals on, on the car even, on like fixing things, stuff like that. Videos for fixing, replacing which fuses for certain projects. I keep manuals for that in Devin Think as well. And the third thing, which we also kind of saw uh, that I use it regularly for is receipts. So you can see I have 2014, 15, 16, 18, up to 2023. I have all my receipts here for all of those years stored as PDFs. In Canada, I don't actually have to keep the physical receipts. I can scan them all and just save them as PDFs and then they count just fine. So I have been paperless since 2014 uh, now and I don't need to keep any of those receipts anymore. In fact, I think I can start deleting some of these because I only have to keep them for seven years. So I'm actually to a point where I can delete some of my old stuff in DevonThink, although it kind of doesn't matter in some ways because it's not enough storage for me to care about. Now, a single app does not have to do all these things for me. Currently, I'd be up for taking something that's research focused and then something that I can, you know, do storage of these notes of my, the PDFs of my receipts, stuff like that. And having two apps, I'm up for that. But ideally, it'd all be in one and it would have some of the features that I do use in DevonThink or I attempt to use so the automation where it should automatically file things labeled with receipt. Found that to be questionable. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, but there's also a bunch of features I don't use in DevonThink that I've talked about before that we can highlight right now. First off, see also. So I've talked about this and said, hey, it can show you other stuff and honestly don't use it, right? So for this article here, you can shrink that and make a little bit bigger. You can see it talks about uh, other articles that may be related to this. I just never use it, right? So chain of thought, the most related article is the article itself. And it talks about other ones, right? Brain is neither a neural network or computer. Book review for the biological mind, social categorization and behavioral episodes, right? But I actually never use any of this. So I don't care if it has it. <laughs> I have never, probably once or twice in a year, I open up the See Also tab and I look at it and think, oh yeah, that's great. I, I might look at one or two articles, but at no point do I ever remember looking at it and saying, hey, this is awesome. And I never would have made this connection before. I'm so glad I have the see also feature. It's okay. If you use it, great. But I've never really found it to be that useful. Well, DevonThink also has the option right here. If I go to import and hit website, 
I can type in a web address here and I can import an entire site. It'll follow all the links and grab everything. And I've done this before for my own site thinking, hey, it's great to have a long-term archive for myself. But the truth is I never do anything with it. So it doesn't matter. Not a feature I'm going to worry about in a future tool because I'm never going to use it because I never have used it in years. Another feature DevonThink has that I've never really used is RSS features. So I can actually add RSS feeds in here and have articles brought in for me automatically. Now, I get why this could be good um, for some people that they really want to have all their articles in here and they're just going to take notes on it. This is great. But I actually like the extra friction of having my RSS tool to be something else. I mean, do push it to Dev and Think. Otherwise, you're like, I already saved more than I really get to ever. But it's just going to be worse when it's easier. Um, so having a tool that I have to push into Dev and Think to actually make it worthwhile, right? I have, an article has to actually graduate to the level where I'm going to say, hey, this is worthwhile to keep. And so then I push it into Dev and Think. RSS, not something I'm going to worry about either. So websites, RSS, out. I just don't even need them. Another feature that DevonThink has is Wikilinks. So I can actually use DevonThink as a full knowledge management system. I don't need to have a separate tool like Obsidian. But again, like I said, I really want to keep other people's thoughts in one spot and my thoughts in another spot. Um, keeping them separate means I have to actually put effort in. I can't just save an article and you know fall into collector's fallacy and say, hey, I've collected it. I've totally done something with it. I actually have to push it into my note-taking tool in Obsidian to make it worthwhile to actually have a note on it. I don't have a note that is you know linkable and everything like that if it's only in DevonThink, only if I've taken the time to process it. Another thing DevonThink has is tags. So there are tags, where are they? Aliases, right? We can alias folders. It's lots of stuff. We can tag down here. Uh, I've never used it. I just, I, I don't, just don't even care. <laughs> like, it's another feature where people say, hey, you can tag it. And like, but if I'm going to push it off into Obsidian and really take good care of it and like take a good note on it, then that is the better spot to do all my tagging, to actually process it there. And I use a system called Tag Notes, I'll link that up above, whichever side it is on YouTube. Um, and I use Tag Notes there to actually really reference and track my backlinks to tags so they can see what is relevant, what is not. And so I never use this in here at all. Many thanks to ReflectApp.app .app for sponsoring this video. So what is ReflectApp? ReflectApp is a note-taking tool. It's available on macOS. It's available on iPadOS. It's available on the web. It's available in a couple different variations for you. It is an app run almost entirely by engineers, not a bunch of VC funding stuff. They're not like chasing monetization. They're not chasing all these other things. They are focusing on a fast app that really helps you think better. One of the things I love about it is that they offer Kindle syncing right in the app. So you don't need a, another service to sync your notes to Kindle to your actual note taking tool. You can actually keep your Kindle notes right in Reflect app for you. I also love the design. You can see it here. You know, I've just started it up for my long-term later review. You can see it here. The design is really clean. I like it a lot. Um, and I also like that you have your own encryption key. So when I sign into the app, I give my own encryption key that is just for me. And you get a recovery kit with it as well. So that if you lose your password and you lose your recovery kit, you're out of luck. You need to actually make sure you keep these things. I actually far prefer that than having... Um, like me having to keep track of my own encryption keys, then I do, you know, them being able to get it too, because that means they can get their notes. If a application can open up your notes for you again, because they have a key, because they say, oh, don't worry, we can open it up for you. That means it's not actually secure. That means they can get into it anytime they want. Reflect has just also introduced chat GPT, so GPT-4 integration with the app to help you with your writing. I've used this a bunch recently to help me um, find good YouTube titles, other stuff like that, so that I can, you know, just do better at that aspect of it, the YouTube part that I am least effective at. Reflect app lets me do that right inside the app so that I can, you know, not have to go off to the chat GPT site and have it right in the app I would use for note taking. Other things it allows you to do is sync your calendar so you can take meetings on your notes right there in the app for you. You don't have to go to another app. You don't have to, you know, make another note. It's right there. You can create your note for that meeting in the app. So if you're interested in Reflect app, go to reflect.app, sign up for your 14 day free trial and watch for my full review coming in a week or two. All right, now if I'm looking for a new tool, let's talk about what I'm specifically looking for. First off, I want to be able to control the sync. Currently, DevonThink syncs with iCloud for me, which is fine. I have pay for iCloud storage with I, Apple stuff because I got a family doing stuff, Apple Music, Apple, all the other stuff. But I want to be able to store it on my own sync. I don't want to sync to someone else's servers. I want to be able to kind of keep track of it Myself, I guess I'm syncing to someone else's servers with iCloud, but I do have a Synology behind me. I can install Nextcloud on it. I would love to be able to just sync it with my Synology and have my own contained notes on my own server that I control so that I don't have other people you know, in the way of that. 
Hopefully that's stable, but we'll find out as we go forward. Second, I'd like to have some type of automation. And I am up for some Python scripting, some other scripting that I will have to do to make this happen. So I'd like to have automation across both platforms, something that works on macOS, something that works on Linux as well. And that is likely a tool like Python, I know the scripting language programming. This is okay for me because I am a programmer, I can learn Python and I can do the scripting, but I would like some automation so that all my receipts actually go to the proper receipt folder. DevonThink has this, although I found it to be problematic. It only works sometimes. It works for a bit and then it stops working and I don't fix it for a long time and I just, it's not doing it anymore. But currently it's not doing it because it stopped working for some reason. I don't know why. It's just not easy anyways. So I'd like to have easier automation, a way to have consistent automation, even if it's, say, running something on my server, on my Synology to make automation happen so I can have all my receipts categorized for me, at least, you know, put into the right year folder. I don't care if it's, you know, gas, whatever else, but put into the right folder so that I don't have to do it myself. Third, it needs to be cross-platform. So I want to have an app for Mac OS. I want to have an app for iPad OS, iOS. I'd like to have an app for Windows, although I don't have a Windows machine, but that's a possibility. I'd like to have an app for Linux so that I am not locked in by a vendor. As I said, I got that Linux machine and then I started looking around and being like, ah, but I, this tool is Mac only. And uh, well, it just makes my computing life harder to be locked in. So I'm going to be moving away from that. I would like to move away from that in lots of different areas. Obsidian is already there. You know, email, I can use an email client for many things. So email is already on every system. Um, but DevonThink wasn't. And I'd like to have a tool that is on every platform. Now pay, some people are gonna say, hey, you're on Linux, you want open source. I don't actually care if it's open source. Open source is great, but being a developer that does open source stuff and people saying, oh, well, why do you even charge for anything? People should just donate, nobody donates. <laughs> like it, if I relied on donations only to make a living, then I'd be out of a job. I would have no job. I would not be doing this videos. I would not be doing anything like that. So I'm willing to pay for the app. I don't mind paying for the app. I don't mind any way paying for it. I paid, I don't know, three or $400 for DevonThink, use it for a number of years. And then they, you know, they come up with a new version. I pay three or $400 again. I do not mind paying for it, even if it's a yearly subscription to pay for it. That is fine. The developers need to be supported. In fact, if it's a tool that it doesn't have direct support method where I can just pay for it in some fashion, uh, if they have, you know, a GitHub project and you can donate to it, I am likely to set up a monthly donation to the project to pay for it so that it stays around because I want it to stay around. All right, let's take a quick look at some of the options. So one of the options is clearly Zotero. Zotero is a research assistant. There is many videos out there. Brian Jenks has some. I've seen lots of stuff. And I'm already keeping track of some of them on how to integrate Zotero and your Obsidian library to do like better citations. I don't care as much about citations. I'm not writing like, you know, thesis papers or anything like that. But it is great on the research side. Um, I've read in a forum post as well that I can sync it with Nextcloud. I can like, I can take care of my own sync. I don't need to do anything with Zotero for that. Now, again, I don't know about their payment models, but I would actually be willing to pay for sync and never use it and then actually just sync with my own thing just so that it stays around so that we keep using it. In fact, that's a better way because then I'm paying for it and using the other resources. So Zotero is one really strong option that I'm going to be looking at. Again, I'm not sure how it falls on the receipt side on some of the tracking of you know, personal manual, stuff like that, but we'll figure that out as we dig into it. Another tool is Joplin. I looked at Joplin, oh, a number of months ago, probably in 2020, actually. Um, and it wasn't terrible, but the biggest thing that I found was that it had a bad iPad application at the time. I was very focused on using my iPad. I'm less so now, actually. Uh, I like my iPad. There are some things that it does great. I love it as a portable computer, but I'm just not sure. It's definitely not living up to the computer aspect that I hoped it would. Um, I'm, yeah, my, my laptop is new. My Linux laptop is new. I'm using it a lot more than my iPad. Who will see if that really holds? You know, I'll do a long-term look at that, but the iPad just isn't holding up. So I'm not sure that I'm going to care as much about that. I'm doing more research, more reading, more note-taking on my uh, laptop than I am on my iPad at this moment. In doing some quick research, you know, even narrow down my options, I do notice that Joplin is totally syncable with Nextcloud as well, or, you know, various other sources. Basically, if I can create a shared folder, I can have a shared Joplin uh, notebook with all my stuff. So Joplin is one strong contender for me to look at as I'm looking at new note-taking tools for, you know, for other people's thoughts as for a read it later service. Another interesting tool, I'll say interesting, well, kind of ugly to be honest, is openpaper.work. So this is available for Linux and for Windows. I've seen some stuff that says you can probably get it running on Mac, although it looked like it was more Intel than M1, right? I have an ARM-based M1 machine right now. So I'm not sure on that respect that I love it, but it's at least a possibility. It does OCR, you can do OCR, you can stick it with Nextcloud. 
So it's at least one to look at, although we'll see how far I go. I, again, I really think that Joplin and Zotero are my biggest, strongest contenders here. And the final one I'll be looking at is Paperless NGX. So this actually runs in a Docker container. So basically running like a virtual machine uh, on my system, and I can do that on my Synology, and then I can get my documents in and out of there. Although I've, you know, I've worked with Docker, Docker for all its ability to, you know, everyone says it's so good, it's easy. It's actually a pain in the butt a lot of time. There's a lot of times where I'm like finding old bugs and stuff that haven't been fixed in years. And I'm like, well, it still doesn't work. And so then you got to find your workaround. And there's a workaround that everyone's using, but there's no actual repair to it. So this is probably the least um, likely one that I'd look at, but being a Docker container, I can run on anything. It doesn't matter. It's just kind of a view into a web browser, into an app. So I could use it on anything. Uh, easily. And there's also some affiliated projects that work with it on iPad OS, iOS, stuff like that. So this is kind of the final one that I would look at as an option for my replacement to DevonThink. Now, one crucial thing as people look at new applications, and I don't do this very often, is that they take way too long to actually decide on an application. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take probably about a month to decide. That's it. I'm going to give myself a couple weeks, so I'll give myself probably a week or two with Zotero. I'll start saving some articles into it. Actually, at the time, probably save double. I'll save some into DevonThink, and I'll save some into Zotero. Uh, and then I will probably do that with Joplin for a little bit as well, probably for a week or two, and then actually you know, try to work through a research process. Um, I'll get the sync set up for both on my next cloud servers, and I'll do videos on these as well. Uh, and again, I'll try it with uh, uh, Open Paper, and I'll try it with Paperless NGX, and we'll see. Um, now, got to be honest, if it's difficult to set up, you know, say paperless NGX, uh, then I probably will stop and I probably just won't even bother. It'll get off the list real quick. I'm all for eliminating things really quick in this process because at the end of the month, I have to have a decision and I'm going to stick with it. I'm not going to just, you know, flop around and try six other things. The biggest thing that people do is they spend so much time evaluating a tool in that they could have done so much work, so much actual research, actual work and actual pushing the projects forward. But instead, they looked for the perfect tool that would make it oh so easy. And there's not, it's just not out there. There is no perfect tool out there. DevonThink has a limitation of cross-platform, right? Zotero, honestly a little ugly. Uh, Joplin, again, the design not as nice, but you know, Paperless NGX runs in a Docker server, like openpaper.work, hard to get running on an ARM processor, it looks like. So there's always gonna be limitations in any tool you use. I'm just gonna accept that. I'm gonna accept that and that's totally fine. Even my billing software that I use for my you know, my freelance job has issues with it that I don't love about Harvest, but I haven't changed for years because it's just far better to keep using that and keep, you know, working instead. That's it. If you have other suggestions, feel free to put them in the comments. If I've missed something that you think is really good cross-platform, has sync that I can run on my own, um, then by all means, let me know what it is below and I would love to take a look. But if it's not available on Linux, don't even suggest it um, because I'm not going to. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube, it's nonsense. You know what it is. Comment, tell your friends, tell your mom. Your mom, I'm sure your mom wants to watch this. Otherwise, you can support the channel by becoming a member. curtismckailca slash membership. Uh, or take a course, curtismckailca slash education. Members get all my courses included. And many thanks to Reflect App for sponsoring this video.